Hey YouTube, welcome back to Tinker with Tools. Today we are gonna be talking about my top seven favorite tools that I have reviewed this year. We're gonna be going over each one and talking about what I like and some of what I don't like about them, but we're gonna be getting into that today on Tinker with Tools. All right, so for those of you who aren't aware, we are actually coming up on the one year mark of this channel and with the year end, Coming, to, coming soon, I wanted to do a little wrap up of my top seven favorite tools that I've reviewed this year. Each one of these tools is making it on the list for a different reason. There's some power tools, there's some hand tools, and there's a lot of great tools out there this year. Each one of these was picked for me because this is what I love, but don't forget that you can also let me know in the comments which tools you love down below. All right, so now let's get right into it. Now these are gonna be in no particular order. All seven of these have made it to this video. So let's jump right into it with the first tool for tonight. So the first tool we're gonna to be talking about is the DCD 800, the new Compact XR drill driver from DeWalt that came out earlier this year. And I can't say enough good things about this drill. Now, I believe most of what I'm going to talk about is going to apply for the DCD 805 as well. This is probably one of my favorite overall drills. And the reason for it is because this thing is the size of a 12 volt tool, but has the power of a much larger tool. When I've compared this, especially up to a certain point, this actually compares quite favorably to the DCD 996. Now that drill is seven, eight years old at this point. They've released higher end drills above it, but for this tiny little drill to be hitting up there, it is quite incredible. Now this one is also a little bit of a twofer because the other item that I absolutely love is the small power stack battery. Now don't get me wrong, I talked about the large power stack battery last week. I have nothing against that battery, but the small one, especially when paired with this or the atomic impact driver, is just a match made in heaven. You get the power roughly of a five amp hour XR battery, but in the size of something that is smaller than their two amp hour battery. So for that reason, DeWalt makes it into our top seven with their DCD 800. All right, so number two is actually going to be a pair of ratcheting screwdrivers. I'll discuss why a pair. First, we're gonna be talking about the LTT screwdriver. That stands for the Linus Tech Tips screwdriver. Linus Tech Tips is a tech channel on YouTube. They're reviews for computers if you've never heard of them. They are quite large, so I imagine you have. Now, one of the big features in their videos is either building or tearing down PCs and servers. And so because of that, they make use of a ratcheting screwdriver quite a bit. For a long time, their standard was using the Snap-on orange handle ratcheting screwdriver. And that's actually one of the things they were developing against when they developed their screwdriver. Now this took them over three years to build and there is a lot of attention to detail here. The knurling on the shaft is absolutely incredible. There's a super strong magnet in the tip that makes it absolutely great for small precision work where you're going to be going into tight spaces and not wanting to drop a screw. A couple of the downsides to it are things that I don't absolutely love is just the lack of over molding on the handle. I feel like it would give you a little bit more grip if it were there. I understand their reasons for not doing it, but I wish it had it. And then the other thing is just simply, you're going to lose bits at some point their bits are actually a little bit shorter and stubbier than what you're gonna be getting from a standard quarter inch hex little short one inch bit. And so because of that, if you do want to put other bits in here, they will still fit, but you're gonna lose half your storage by going with the longer bits. Other than that, it's an absolutely sublime screwdriver, wonderful to use. Now, the reason why I say that it's a pair of screwdrivers is because of the price of this one. This is actually $70 before taxes and shipping. This is actually the Mega Pro screwdriver. When they started their development, they actually licensed the Mega Pro ratcheting mechanism and the Mega Pro bit holding uh, mechanism that is actually quite wonderful. Now, they have since completely overhauled the ratcheting mechanism and improved it, for, especially for precision work. Um, I think they've improved it a great deal. They added the knurling to the shaft, which I think is a great improvement. And you really can just feel a difference when using the ratcheting mechanism. Um, but some of the things they have going for it is, like I said, they're not using those proprietary bits. They actually have double-sided ones in here. So they do give you quite a few different bit options in there. And if you end up having to replace it, you can just replace it with other standard bits that you find. The other thing, like I said, this actually comes in at roughly half the price. Mine was just over $30. This one actually comes in at 70. And so for a lot of people, I think that price point is probably just a little bit more than they're wanting to pay. And so that's where the Mega Pro screwdriver is going to be the screwdriver for them. So check those out if you're in need of a good ratcheting screwdriver. 
All right, next up, our number three tool, we're gonna to be talking about the Makita XGT hammer drill. Now the Makita XGT kit was one of those that I actually wanted to bring to the channel for quite some time. This drill was not actually what I was initially excited about in that kit. I actually wanted the impact driver most because I was convinced that the impact driver was going to be the greatest thing ever. Well, in fairness, the impact driver really wasn't that much more impressive than the 18 volt, but when I bought the kit, I actually ended up being so impressed with this drill that I actually dubbed it the best drill I've tested to this point. A couple of the things that I absolutely love about it is it is very quick and powerful and it is just a joy to use. It is very ergonomic and very smooth and balanced. And you're gonna notice those things if you're using the drill in and out for a long time. And at the end of the day, it actually has performed the best of any drill we've tested as well. So while the impact driver wasn't necessarily this bump up in performance, that I was hoping it would be, the drill absolutely blew me away. This tool, in my opinion, starts to make the XGT platform make sense because of how much more impressive it is than its 18 volt counterpart. So go ahead and check it out at number three, the Makita XGT hammer drill. All right, now at number four, I'm talking about the DeWalt 12 volt extreme brushless circular saw. Now this is a small circular saw. It is actually a five and three eighths inch blade. That is a lot smaller than perhaps what you're going to be getting on bigger seven and a quarter traditional circular saws. But having a small saw like this has its benefits. One, the weight is significantly less. That is one of the things I featured in the video of it is just how much lighter it was than a bigger seven and a quarter saw. Another thing that this has that most seven and a quarter sidewinder saws don't have is actually that it is blade left. Now that is something that's usually featured on the six and a half inch saws. For whatever reason, I spent all my childhood and most of my early adult years using blade right saws, never even giving consideration to a blade left saw. And then I've got my hands on my first one with, with the Milwaukee six and a half inch, absolutely love it. And so having blade left in the saw really is something I love. Now, if you've tried blade left and it's not for you, I get that, but I absolutely love it about this. One of the things I love about this is just how portable it is. Taking this saw makes it super easy to just pack it up and take it with me. It's gonna be able to make the cuts through most of the materials you're gonna buy and you're gonna be saving space and weight with it. You're not going to be buying this saw to do everything you need to do to say build a house or to do a ton of repetitive cuts like you're gonna do with the bigger saws. The runtime and power is simply not going to be there for bigger, more demanding tasks. But for any of your lighter duty tasks, I think this is the perfect saw just to tote around and I think it's the most impressive 12 volt saw that we have on the market right now. So go ahead and check out our number four, the DeWalt 12 volt brushless circular saw. All right, now at number five, I have the Gen 2 Makita XGT impact driver. This one's imported from the pan. Now let's get into why I absolutely love this impact driver. I recently did a video on this in which I compared it to the Gen 1 made in China impact driver and the LXT 18 volt impact driver that's not on the 40 volt platform. You would think that this being the latest and greatest they have, it would perform the best in those performance testing and it actually finished third. And yet I'm still putting this as one of my favorite tools of the year. This one is obviously a little bit of a personal preference more than the performance just blew me away. But what you're gonna be getting with this impact driver is a level of refinement that I just don't think you're gonna be getting with any other impact driver. The trigger on this is so incredibly smooth, the precision on it, it allows you to have a great confidence in what you're doing with the impact driver. There's a ton of customization down on the panel and when you get used to it, you can really fine tune it exactly how you want to be able to get the exact kind of performance out of it that you're looking for. Having a tool imported from Japan doesn't come without its downsides. We actually talked about the GIS call it on a couple of different videos that we have. It's not going to fit American bits as well. There's gonna be a lot of forward and back play when you insert the bits. It will hold on to them securely it's just going to be a little bit annoying with that. So at number five, it's the Makita XGT Gen 2 impact driver from Japan. Absolutely love this thing. All right, so coming in at number six is actually a tool I was completely unaware of until a few months ago, and that is going to be the pliers wrench. If you aren't aware of a pliers wrench, it replaces the functionality almost of an adjustable wrench and you're able to get some really good torque on the bolt or nut that you're trying to remove or tighten. This actually has different positions where you can press in the button and adjust the jaws in and out 
And once they lock in on one of those positions, they are not going to deviate from that position at all. You can still open the jaws up slightly, and when you do that, you're able to put it on the fastener, and then you do have the ability to tighten down on it, and it actually just makes for an incredibly useful tool, and in my opinion, vastly superior to the Crescent Wrench. Now, they do sell them in a variety of sizes, as I mentioned, and even different brands. This is the 7-inch model from Knipex that I bought because I did want something smaller than the big ones I had. The first one I actually purchased is actually the Icon version from Harbor Freight in their 10-inch variety. Um, this one ran about $40, but I did have a coupon that they let me use on it. And overall, the fit and finish of this one is actually quite nice. It does obviously, being a 10-inch version, give you a lot bigger size of what you can do and more torque on it. I think if you can only own one, I would suggest owning the 10-inch version because I think it does give you more flexibility. But for toting around in your pocket, having something a little bit smaller like the 7-inch here is actually really nice and I find it incredibly useful. So I don't actually have a full video on these and showing them off yet, but if you haven't already, go ahead and try out our number six tool of the year, which is the pliers wrench from a variety of different brands. All right, so now at our number seven, we are gonna be talking about the brand new Gen 3 M12 fuel hammer drill. When Milwaukee announced that they were redoing their entire drill and impact driver lineup, both in the M18 and the M12, it was one of my most anticipated releases of the year. I pre-ordered them, I waited for them to come, and when they came, I made a video with my first impressions that night. And for my first impressions, there was only one tool that stood out as being worth <laughs> an upgrade in my initial testing, and that was the M12 fuel hammer drill. It's not that the other tools were bad, they just didn't stand out as a generational improvement, in my opinion, over the previous generations. This M12 hammer drill, though, is one of the greatest tools of the year. And had it not been for this mighty little XR, I would definitely say if you're looking for a small form factor drill, go with the M12. Because the power is going to rival a lot of the lower tier of 18 volt drills. The size is going to be better. And it actually is going to be something that is going to hit above its weight class, in my opinion, quite frequently. Now, what makes this drill stand out over the prior Gen 2 M12 hammer drill? Well, they actually increased the power a noticeable amount and made this a much more potent drill. It's able to drive fasteners better. It's able to handle bigger bits easier. And so it's going to be more versatile. If you only wanna take one drill, you can do quite a bit of different things with this. I've got a video of it bearing an 18 inch auger bit almost all the way down into a four by six. I was able to drive a variety of large fasteners with this without much treble. And then we also showcased earlier on that it was able to do finer precision work with relative ease. Now, one of those big improvements is they went back to a mechanical clutch instead of the electronic clutch they had on the prior generation. They also have improved, in my opinion, the trigger fill and trigger response on this one. All right, so there you have it, my top seven tools. Now, every one of these tools is special to me, but I wanna hear down in the comments, what are the tools that you tried out this year or the new tools you bought that you absolutely love and would love to share with the rest of the tool world. We are lucky to be living in the tools landscape we are, where there are a bunch of premium brands and premium tools out there that allow you to pick and choose from which ones you want best. If you wanna stick on a particular brand, there's a bunch of different brands that are offering very complete lineups and can easily outfit you for any job that you're gonna to need to do. If you like the video, go ahead and hit that like button. And if you haven't already, consider subscribing to the channel so you can get notified whenever I put out new content. Thanks for watching this year. I appreciate all the viewers who have made this year so much fun. Go ahead and have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, and I'll catch you next time on Tinker with Tools.